Hello from the Tick Fund. I'm Mayor Soloveitchik, and I'm delighted to be joined for the latest in my series of short conversations on what Jerusalem means to me by Ben Shapiro. Ben, thank you so much for making the time today. And thanks for having me. It's great to speak with you. Uh, I thought we'd begin our conversation uh, with uh, a fascinating uh, piece of uh, writing that you gave us uh, at the moment when the American embassy was moved to Jerusalem. And uh, what you wrote is that uh, this move highlighted how, and I'm paraphrasing you, how Israel isn't a new outpost of the West. It's the oldest center of the West. And you added that the embassy moving to Jerusalem was a recognition that the West was founded on Jerusalem rather than the other way around. That, that's really a fascinating sentence. I thought maybe I'd begin by asking you to expand on that. Sure. So I, I think that one of the perceptions that has become very widespread on the political left, unfortunately, and also is promulgated by people who wish Israel not to exist as, a, as an independent polity, right, is the idea that, that basically Israel is established as a colonialist outpost in the Middle East by foreigners. And that, of course, is a lie. The, the reality is that Israel is the wellspring of the West. It is the oldest beginning of the West. Central principles of Western thought begin in Jerusalem, begin with the, the foundation of, of Judaism and the promulgation of Judaism from its center in Jerusalem, uh, those, those foundations include things like the idea that the universe actually is a cognizable place where you're able to use the human mind to, to discover eternal truths about the way that the world works, the idea that history has a direction, that it's not just merely circular, the, the idea that the human mind is capable not only of reflecting what the universe is saying to it, but is capable of, of, of searching beyond itself, uh, and that there is a moral relationship between the things that you do and the outcomes that exist in the real world. All of these are Judaic concepts that then end up being promulgated largely via Christianity to a far broader audience over time. And it's that balance between Jerusalem, those core ideas, that, that there is an intelligible universe that human beings are capable of understanding because God created us in his own image. Uh, and the idea that history has a direction and that that we are that progress exists in the world. These ideas combined with sort of Greek rationality, the, the dual poles of Jerusalem and Athens, as Leo Strauss suggested, are, are the, the basis of the development of Western civilization. And so the, the notion that Jerusalem was predominantly important to humanity because of its religious beginnings is, is not only historically true, it's also ideologically true and, and reminds people of why it should continue to be important today. It's, it's not some sort of foreign imposition on, for example, Muslim or Arab territory. That's, that's, that's historically and ideologically inaccurate. Right. Uh, you wrote a book where you, wrote, where you described the significance of both Jerusalem and Athens and how the combination uh, of the two cities uh, gave us uh, the achievements of the West. Uh, I'm wondering uh, how would you describe uh, the tensions uh, between uh, Jerusalem and Athens, the city of Athens, of course, uh, did give us, of course, uh, rationality, uh, at least to some extent comes from Athens, uh, philosophy, architecture, art, uh, but it was also a center of uh, uh, paganism and uh, a denial of some of the very concepts that Jerusalem gave to the world. Uh, so uh, how would you describe the, the tension uh, in between uh, them and uh, how uh, the West was produced by uh, I suppose, selecting uh, from the two or melding the two and synthesizing the two? Uh, on a sort of broad level, I think that the, the easiest way to sort of understand the difference between the Jerusalem and Athens is that Jerusalem is based on the notion that there are certain, there are certain truths that are outside the human mind but that you have to take as the basis for all future development, right? This is the idea of revelation, uh, which is obviously central to Judaism and central to all religion, is the idea that there are certain premises that have to be used for any sort of ideological or intellectual development. And those are some of the things that I was talking about before. It, you, can, it, it, you have to actually just assume, there's no way to prove that, for example, the things that we think about the universe are true, that two plus two is four outside of the realm of your own brain. There's nothing in evolutionary biology that suggests that such a truth exists because evolutionary biology is about evolutionary fitness. Right. And so the, 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 you have to just accept that we're working within that framework in order to move forward. What, what Jerusalem, you know, the, the shortcoming of Jerusalem, historically speaking, is that you can become hemmed in by accepted wisdom and accepted knowledge of the past without the capacity to further develop that. And, and I think that if you look within Judaism specifically, the oral law is an attempt to merge human wisdom with, in, in a sort of common law fashion with the, the premises that are, that are handed down on Sinai. 
Greece, on, on a broader level, represents the rationality of human beings brought to bear on these premises. Now, the, the, the mutual threat that they pose to one another is that if you are a pure rationalist, then you can have your rationalism attack the very premises upon which all progress is based. And you see this right now in the West as, as sort of post-Enlightenment thinking takes the fore, where all of the premises of the Enlightenment themselves are now being called into question. Rationalism is sort of eating itself because there is no respect for accepted tradition and accepted wisdom of the past. On the other hand, you can see how religion falls into theocracy when the idea is you can't apply human wisdom to diktats of the past. There is no development. What we have is the way that it's always been, and therefore it can't change in any way. And so it's always that tension and that balance that allows for progress uh, among humans. You can't let go of the, the poles that tie you to earth, and that would be Jerusalem. But at the same time, you can't let go of rationality or you're never going to become airborne. Mm -hmm.